Hi, this is Jen from Why Kevin Love. And again, I apologize, folks. The video before I lost my internet connection, so I'm not sure what the deal is. Um, <laughs> all of a sudden, I just lost a connection. So I started this video all over again, so I apologize for that. Um, I don't know if I'll have any other issues. Again, I'm in the basement. I've got the chimney and these big tanks, and my internet connection is on the other side of the house, so I don't know if it's because of interference of that. Um, hopefully, it won't happen again. But in any event, I'm going to try to keep going here. So I'm going to start a little bit over. Um, I've got a leather belt strip, and today I'm going to show you how I make a hand tool design on it. It's going to be original design. I'm going to make it up as we're going along. The first thing I did, and I do have to move this camera down so you can see my workbench here, um, is I took this tool called a stitching groover, and I scribed this line along the side. I cut these lines, basically an edge line. Um, after I've done that, now I'm going to begin my design. So again, it's all about measurement, which is, again, I had mentioned or <laughs> in the video I said a minute ago, these books really got me going on this. These are books by Paul and Burnett, and it basically told me how to line up the design and things. Now, a lot of the designs he had in these books, I did not have the tools to make it. So I improvised from the beginning. I kind of like made this design, but I didn't have all the same tools, so I had to improvise and make it a little different. So, and I apologize, I can't get the camera so you can see the table and me at the same time. <clears throat> um, so I improvised. So after that, I just started creating my own designs. So the next step in this process, which again, I'm going to put the camera down here so you can see what I'm working on, is my wind dividers. And this is where I think I left off when I lost my internet connection. This is my tool I, I posted this week for my tool trivia, which is on Tuesday for you to guess the tool. Many people guessed it was a compass, and so I did not say that was wrong. Um, I do give a, a fun for anybody who participated. So I will be giving prizes each week for those who participate. Um, again, a compass would have measurements to determine, you know, size, I think, would, you know, have measurements, so you could, if you wanted to make a circle an inch wide, you know, it would have measurements to help you. This has no measurements on it, but basically it does work with a compass, like a compass, and I'm not going to change this one only because it's set for what I can do, but you can make it wider. It's basically to use to measure the distance between things. So now on this, the first thing I'm going to do, you actually do wet the leather, which is called casing. It's just a sponge, and in order to work on leather, now this is vegetable tan leather, any designs you put on leather are vegetable tan leather because it has to absorb the water. It does not work if it does not absorb water. And it needs to be a certain consistency in the wetness. And that changes because it will dry out over time. So I wet it. I'm not super fussy about that. You can kind of tell how the tools um, go into the leather. How you see me and this at the same time. How how it, it feels. It's kind of, it should feel like wet clay. You know, you sometimes just touch it to your face. If it feels cool, it's wet enough. If it's not, then it isn't. Um, so now I'm going to use these wind dividers and I'm going to just scribe a line. Let's see what I'm doing here. Scribe a line down the center of the belt. Most of my things are symmetrical. So they have, you know, have designs along the border, but they also have designs that go down the middle. So you just scribe this again, keeping it flush against one side of the belt all the way down through, and it makes a line. And I don't want that real, real dark because, again, I want it to <laughs> try to get down here so you can see me. <coughs> I don't want it to show up too, too much when the design is done. And basically, these are my stamping tools here. Um, again, many of these are old. This is one of my original tools. I bought that in 1977. Um, these are the tools, they're called veiners, and really they were to make these um, floral designs and more traditional leather tooling, which I didn't really enjoy that much, so I use them in a different way. So these, I mean, a lot of these were to make these intricate, again, tooled flower designs. I don't have anything I can pull out that shows you that kind of design at this moment. Um, the older tools are much better. The newer tools are cheap metal. This, um, I have some tools here that are very bent. This is one of my favorites. Look at how the handle is bent. That's because it's cheap metal, um, and that makes it very difficult because you're trying to hammer this in, and if the handle isn't straight, it's very hard to get that to hammer into the leather straight, and that makes a difference because the way they, you know, you get the impressions in, 
you know, you want it to show better. So that makes a difference. I have another set of tools here. This set of tools is more my carving set of tools to make animal scenes and pictures and stuff. Uh, some are used for both. I mean, they're really all for carving a little bit different. You know, not as many people do this type of carving that, that I'm doing, these stamp designs. You don't see too many people that do this kind of work. I don't anyways. Maybe in a different part of the country. I'm here in New England. Um, so basically, I pick a stamp. Usually it's going to be one of these, what I call the veiners. And it's all about positioning, where I position this tool in accordance to something else. So I might take it, and I'm touching it to the edge there. I'm touching it to the center. You're going to hammer it. There's different size hammers. So this is my larger, heavier hammer I use um, because it has the weight. When you're doing tooling, you use a smaller hammer because you're not hitting as hard. There's also something called a maul that you can use to hit. That, I don't like as well, personally. I do better with this. And these are very good hammers. It doesn't, you know, the ends of it don't get messed up. And basically, I stamped the design. Now, what I'm going to do next touches what I did there. So it's kind of touch points. It's touching there, it's touching the center again. So I'm going to make a circle here. We're noble. Touching the bottom. If my lines are centered right, center line, then this should line up pretty close. So it's all about touching it to where I started. Things like that. So I got my first part there, or have my first part, I should say. Now I go from there and I pick something else. And again, a lot of times it is just done randomly like this. I don't have any set pattern that I'm starting with to begin with. I just pick a tool off of my tools here and begin by stamping it on something. Now, obviously, some of these are like leaves and stuff. They're not going to go with a design like this. Um, let's see here. What do I want to do? And again, I just kind of I, I'm a visual learner, so again, and because I've been doing this for many years, I have some idea of what the tools will look like in my mind. Sometimes I place them on the leather, and if you push it a little bit, it will make a little bit of an impression so I can kind of see what the design is going to look like. I don't do that all the time because you don't want it not necessarily to show. And again... Now, a lot of times when I'm tooling, once I get a pattern established, I, um, I'll do all one, like half of the belt, and then turn it around. Because basically to stamp the, the other half of this, see, I'm turning the belt around. So I'm not doing that every single time once I get a pattern established. But since right now I'm making my design, I don't know what my pattern is. So I can't line it up. So I can't do that quite yet. So I would just keep stamping along like this. And I'm not sure on the camera if you can see how much. I don't know if I can really get that any closer so that you can see me too. So again, if I was going to do that, I'd have to put this out here. And again, that's touching the tip of the, the end of the other one. Now if I'm going to make that oval again. Same thing. I'm going to make sure I get the same tool I did. It's this one. So again, now I'm going to touch the tip of that one. I'm going to touch it to the top again. Same thing I just did. Now, once I've got this one done, my pattern is somewhat established. I'm going to add some more things in here afterwards, but this is going to get the pattern going. I am cold, so I'm, I'm sorry that I'm a little snuffly here. I'm sure you hear that. <coughs> my breathing is not all that good. So now that kind of sets my pattern. So now if I want to go through and measure... I can now take my wing dividers again. And to get this pattern lined up, I'm going to start at the beginning of this design. And go to the beginning of this design. If I keep doing that, every place I make this dot is where that circle is going to start. And so you go like that. And again, I'm not going to do go down the entire belt. You have to make sure the wetness is okay. And again, you're doing this outside in the sun. It dries up very quickly. And 
and again, depending on how hard you hit the tool, depend. You know, I've been doing this for a long time, so I can kind of feel if the tool goes in enough. You can tell when the leather isn't wet enough because it it doesn't go in this easily. Obviously, if you hit it to one side more than the other, it makes the impression darker on one edge than the other. Things like that. So it's all practice. Again, I am completely self-taught. So the way I learn this is, again, by these books and by practice. So I make many, many designs. And like I said, a lot of them are just random and I make them up. If I do really like the design, then what I do is I create, you know, if I want to make this pattern again, I will create some sort of card and it will give me the directions of what I'm doing and tell me what stamps I used for it and so forth. Kind of like in the, the book there. But again, a lot of them I improvise, so I had to make up my own patterns and designs because I did not have all of the tools that that book had. So I had to just go and... Um, you know, improvise and make my own. They do a lot of what's called swivel cuts in them, and I don't do so much of that. Um, again, I've come up with my own patterns and my own designs and my own way of doing things. And so again, you know, I'd stamp that down the whole thing. Now I go back to the other tool. And again, it makes it much quicker because you can, and usually like this tool even, I'm going to do all this one side because I don't have to turn it around. I'm going to stamp this one. And I'm placing it on my lines that I have there in the center. And then I'm going to go back into the other side. And again, lighting is important. It's, you know, I have to have a lot of light to work. Which is why for the camera, it may not be the greatest because it maybe glares a little bit. But um, this is how it goes. Um... So again, you know, we do that, then I go back and do the other design. Which should now fit right in between these two because it was measured out. So again, I do all this side because to stamp it the other way, it's easier to turn the whole belt around. And again, I'm not going to do the, you know, the entire belt here. I'm going to get this. I'm going to add some other things to the design next, though. I'm touching it to the edges where I had this stamp the last time. So, again, it's all really what I call touch points. I touch the tool to another tool, or to, you know, that's how I line them up, is by touching them to the, a previous point I've made. So, now I've got that so far. Now, again, I'll probably add some, um, I will add a little bit. I figure out what I think might go in there nicely. Obviously, I'm going to have something in the middle of the circle. I want it to be one large thing. But then I want to do something different in the middle. The smaller designs. A lot of times, these are something I use a lot, which kind of are like crescents. I have those in like five different sizes. Um, I use those a lot. Which part of what I want to do here? Sometimes I take the design and see. And again, so I just kind of play around and see what I think might look good. Sometimes I make. Well, I think that one's good. Yeah. Go big. Go with those in here. Go with those in here. Do I make mistakes? Yes. The tool slides sometimes. If the leather isn't wet enough, the um, tool will slide. The impression, you know, doesn't always come out perfect. Um, you can't erase them a little bit, but it is going to lose some sort of mark depending on how, how deep the design went in, things like that. I do have ways of cheating a little bit because, again, if you're molding the leather, you can kind of unmold the leather if you get a design. It doesn't quite come out how you want it. Like this. If anybody is watching and has any questions, please um, look at the seed. Yeah. If you have any questions or comments or things you want to mention more, 
And so now I've stamped the crescent in there. And then I'd move on and decide what I want to do next, which will probably be something else in that circle. Again, it looks kind of funny because of the wetness on it. <laughs> it's kind of random, kind of blotchy on the water right here. So it's actually making it harder for you to see the design. Um, let's see here. I don't know. Let's see. Now, this again, I'm not liking this design so much myself right now. But again, when I add the color to it and stuff, that adds a whole other dimension and gives the, the belts a whole new look. Um, entirely different. So again, obviously, depending on the length of the belt strip. Now, because I custom fit my belts when a person buys them, my strips are long, which I've mentioned in some of my other videos. I make them the full length of the hide. So, you know, some strips can be long. And um, so, obviously, the amount of tooling. And again, this is not, I really shouldn't let the leather get drippy like that. Because sometimes it does not dry evenly. And it will make it darker in places. That's almost too wet now up here. I would need to let that dry a little bit before I can do too much water work. Because I'm now wet it too much. But I didn't like the drip on there because sometimes that will unevenly mark. So again, if it's too wet, you need to let it dry a little bit. Um, and that's all there is to it, it, you know. And then you can start working again. You can keep wetting it. I mean, some people say you need to keep it wet and put something on it um, so it doesn't dry out. I honestly do not do that. Um, I do it like this. Uh, so... It is a little bit wet now. And again, now, if you notice my table here, to work with leather, you need a good solid table. This is a solid piece of granite. This is something my husband found at, he was looking for a crane for his garage and happened to come across this. This, this is a piece of granite. It is three feet long, four and a quarter inches thick. And it's over two feet wide. Um, Obviously, a piece of granite that size is heavy. Um, we had to use a crane to get it down in, here in the basement. It actually came with this beautiful table it fits on. So this is a perfect surface to work on here because it doesn't move. When I go to craft shows, I'm actually working on a purlon beam that came from my house, a big round log. And then I do have a piece of granite that also goes on top of it because you want this firm surface. If you're working just on the wood hammering, you're going to dent, and that's going to make your impressions not come out straight. So having a smooth surface is very important for the leather work. Um, so this is being, and a surface is, isn't wiggly. That, I do have an issue with it shows because the ground, of course, isn't even, you know, things like that. So it doesn't always come out exactly um, perfect. So actually, I'm going to keep going this way with this now because the other end of the belt is a little bit too wet. And see, sometimes I would do this and then go back into the other side. You know, whichever way is easier. I mean, on this, I wasn't turning it to do the circles. But again, if it is lined up right, you notice my tips are touching each other. So this one fits exactly in there to make the circle. Uh, I mean, so there's no real order I have to do it in. As long as I know the positioning, you know, I don't have to stamp this one after I stamp the other ones. Obviously, I have to, like, have those two before I know where this one goes. Oh, not that one. Because it goes in the middle. So I need to have those two there so I, I know where this is centered. Because I'm not making the center mark. I'm just, you know, see, I can do it this way. It's just easier for me to see when I turn the belt around. And do this one here because I've got the one, so I'll put this next to that. So again, it's all about just building the design, kind of. 
and one thing touching another and that's how the pattern is built and the design is created so now i have to go back over here and put my crescents on these couple next week i'm going to talk about adding the color to this space because the next step after this is adding the color these obviously this is you know they're all finished this part but then you have to add the you don't have to add color but i do let me see if i can pull this up here and it's a very simple belt maple leaves for spring but again how i add the color to the belts I'm not sure how well you can see it. So that will be next week where I talk about how I get the color and the design. It's an antiquing actually makes the impression show up better. So that's the kind of dye I use for these. Um, so that will be next week where I talk about the coloring. Um, so again, pretty much... Um, that's how I make my designs. I'm, I will add some other things to this still. I'm not sure what. Um, again, I just kind of visualize it and then try to think. And what's amazing, too, when I mentioned about the color, um, the color on these makes a big difference. I've done the same design on several you know, different belts, and I've colored them differently because sometimes I do that just random. It looks like an entirely different belt. I have a hard time myself even telling the same belt if I look at them quickly. I literally have to put the two belts side by side and try to line up the design and say, oh, that is the same design. But the coloring and how it's put on or where it's put on, you know, what colors I put in where, what spaces basically makes the, enti the belt look entirely different. So that's a whole other aspect. So if I colored one belt five different ways, it would look like five, you know, you could have five different belts just with that same design. Um, so that will, I'll be talking about the coloring next week. Um, let's see here. Again, I still will add some more things in here. I'm not sure what. I'm not sure why. I would like something maybe a little on the border here. And I'm not sure what I want to do there. That's not going to interfere. And see, you know, I try tools. And I see how they fit in the space I have. Sometimes you... Let's see in the corner. No, no, I'm too high. I'm sorry. Pardon me, because I have the camera down too low. You can't see my face when I'm talking. But then, if you can't see what I'm doing here either, so now I'm kind of positioning this in. Corner over here in each of these. Again, that will have to be done on the other side, and then actually, just a few of those in there. Just a few of those in there. Make the whole board like that. I'm pretty good job stamping those because I don't want to be good. Again, I'm touching the corner to the left corner of the last one. Turn the belt there. Now I'm like, and now I'm actually liking the design better. <laughs> Doesn't really matter what I like, though. Um, but again, this is basically how I build the designs, and as I said the coloring makes a big difference on how it actually looks when it's finished. And then again, a whole other process is finishing the edges, which is actually quite a bit of work. Um, make them rounded these edges have nothing done to them but like i said this is why i have the eye edge the scribe along the edge so that when i finish these i'm not actually touching the tooling impressions that i've made so it won't affect those whatsoever
bad. Oh, I actually think that looks not bad. So I think that's what my design will be when it's finished. What do you think? Any opinions? Any any of those of you watching? If you're watching live, I would appreciate it if you, you know, type in the comments live so I, I just get an idea of how many people do watch live. If you're watching on replay, um, I'd love you to comment replay or tell me where you're from. Um, again, any comments, likes, shares, really help a small business. Um, I think that's pretty much all I'm going to do for right now. I know I am having was having trouble with the... Um, internet here a minute ago. I haven't actually had that problem in the past. I know other people, other recordings I've watched, that happens from time to time. Um, and again, I think the location here does make a difference because we have a, a full stone chimney and these, some, these tanks and everything. So sometimes reception in certain parts of the house are not good um, because, you know, chimney is in between and things like that. Um, my internet is actually over this corner upstairs. So... I didn't think it should be too bad. I mean, normally I'm recording in this other little corner over here, just a couple feet away, and I haven't ever had a problem there. But again, it's always glitches. Technology, you know, always leaves you with something to work on. So um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say today. Um, thank you for any of you that watched me. If you have any questions, you have any comments, you um, want me to talk about other things, um, Please feel free to, to ask. I will try to get back with you as soon as I can. Um, I don't have a whole lot more to say. So again, next week on the workshop Wednesday, I'll be demonstrating how I add the color. All next week is about adding the color to the belts. So I'll be telling more stories about how I got started doing this, um, about the tools. Again, most of the tools came from Tandy Leather. Um, they're cheapening out their tools now, which really bothers me because, like I said, I showed you this one of these... You know, these bent tools, which really suck. Um, because they're not, you know, it's hard to stamp that straight on the thing when you can't hit the handle of it straight. Um, I, can, I can bend them back, but then they just bend right again. Um, so that that's, makes it difficult. There's also this kind of stamp, which again, you add the handle to. So the individual stamps, and they share the same handle. Um, in a case like that, I could use something like that because, you know, I could put a different hand, you know, you had a separate handle, but it doesn't. Um, so that's about how I tool the belts. I hope you thought that was interesting. Um, like I said, any questions or comments, please feel free. Um, I don't think I have a whole lot more to share right now. Hi, Jean. How are you? Good to see you. I hope you caught some of this. I had a glitch at the beginning with the internet and things, so I had to start over. Um, do you have any questions or anything you wanted to ask me? I have to turn away. I can't see my computer screen and this is the camera at the same time because I've had to change it so you could see the work table. So if you have any questions or anything, please feel free. Um, thank you for watching. Um, like I said, that's pretty much all I have today. Um, so again, I talked about how I did this design very quickly. You wet the leather. You pick your tool. I've measured out my design here. Yes. So this design. Go here. This one. Make my circle. It's all about the touch points and where things touch to make the design. So my design to Do this side. Now what do we do? We have the edge in here. Again, like, like I mentioned earlier, usually I would do the design down the entire belt. You know, like do all this 
at one time, but just to the sake of the video, I wasn't doing the entire belt. Oh, I've got already half of it done. More than half of it done. And so actually, this process, once you get your design lined up and things like that, it actually goes pretty quickly. Because people say, how long does it take you to do the tooling? It really, once I get my pattern established, it goes quickly. Um, it, it's more when you don't have, you know, once the pattern is done, it goes quickly. You can stamp it. So the stamping part, generally, on most belts, really is less than an hour or about an hour. Um, you know, sometimes it takes me more time to figure out what I want to stamp and things like that, trying to figure out what my design is going to be. Um, you know, trying to figure out what I want where. Because, again, I'm making them up. So it takes me a little bit to figure that out. But I would say generally about an hour for the design. The coloring sometimes, again, depending on how much, coloring is actually the part I like the least because it bothers my hands. I have carpal tunnel and the position you hold. See, now this doesn't bother me too much. I mean, I have arthritis too, so sometimes my hands ache and I do have to reposition. But see, now again, I'm taking the tools out of my hand. I'm picking up different ones, so this doesn't bother me. Um, if I, sometimes if I'm doing repetitive design and I'm holding the tool and stamping it constantly, it does bother my hand and I have to stop. But if I keep switching tools like this, it doesn't really bother me. But as far as coloring, the position of your hand, my hand goes to sleep and gets numb and things like that. Um, but the hammering, because my hand is up in the air, so it's so bad. So again, that's how I make the designs. I pretty much, sorry, I can't show. Pretty much, that's all I'm going to go on to today. Next week, I'll talk about how I color it. Um, thank you for, for joining me, Jean, and others out there. Um, I appreciate, you know, you following me, my likes, comments, um, please share this with others. If I would appreciate it because that really helps me to grow. I'm really working on, um, you know, trying to do better here. Um, again, please join me for my tool trivia, Gene. I don't know if you were watching the whole video, but this was a tool I used today. Um, this is going to be my tool for next week. So if you watch this video, you'll have your answer and you will win a prize. So... You'll have to check out early in the video if you missed the beginning where I talked about what this tool was and how I used it. And you could win a prize next week. So you might want to participate in that. Um, and thank you very much. I really don't think I have a whole lot else to say for right now. And I apologize for cutting off my head. It's Like I said, I have my computer's over here, so I won't have the camera in front of me. But I can't really see what you're seeing until I look to the side. Um, so I've been cutting off my head and things or not showing you what I'm working on. So I apologize for that. I will try to get better on this. Um, but thank you very much for, for watching me today. I think that's all I've got to say for now. Um, thank you very much. Please, again, like, share, comment. That really is the best way to help me um, at this point, other than, of course, making a purchase. Um, so thank you very much for right now. I think that's about all I've got to say for right now. And I hope you join me again. Um, tomorrow is Thursday. So, um... My blog will come out, which will highlight some of these videos and things that are um, going on this week. Um, Friday is Flashback Friday, so I will be, again, talking about some of the old original belts. I still have some belts that I made in the 70s that were my father's. I showed those a little bit on Monday. Um, I'll talk more about those on Friday. Saturday is my Spotlight Saturday series where I will show you some finished tooled belts with the designs and things on them. So I'll be showing finished products, not half finished products, completely finished products. So kind of my idea is for the week to kind of take you through the whole process of creating one particular thing. So again, this week, you know, it's about the belts uh, or this whole month is about the belts. So I hope um, you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much. And I hope you'll catch me later on this week. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.